as the Intel presenter of the day, I'm going to have a, a quick look at some of the technologies underneath the hoods of the two new precisions. There's two things that you, as a user, people want from a workstation. The, the first is, I want the result, whatever it is I'm trying to do to simulate, I want the result as quick as possible. And, and, and secondly, I want it with the minimum disruption possible. I thought I'd just introduce this topic with a quote from uh, Seymour Cray. Hey, anyone can build a fast CPU. The, the trick is to build a fast system. So you, you would think, yeah, well, that ruffles a few feathers at Intel because it's not that easy to build a fast CPU. H however, he's right in some aspects. The system, as you can see at the bottom, you know, is far more than the CPU. And, and actually, the challenge is, is not so much how fast the CPU goes, but it's keeping all the other parts fast enough to keep that CPU up and churning. And so the CPU is critical, as you'd expect me to say, in terms of the overall performance, but it's not the only part. Uh, and so, so I wanted to look at what's under the hoods of these new precisions that address the thing of how do we get the CPU faster, and how do we do things around the CPU to keep it fed and going faster? With the two systems that are being launched today, the 7610 and the 1700, they are two new TOCs where every year there's a refresh and it alternates between what we call uh, a tick, which is move it onto the new process technology, shrink it down to the new manufacturing, and a TOC which is redesign the internal architectures and completely recraft the, the thing. Uh, and to be honest, it's the tops where the big changes happen. So each year there's a kind of either a tick or a top. The 7610 is, is tocking onto, as Don said, the Sandy Bridge microarchitecture. And the 1700 is tocking onto the not yet officially released uh, Haswell microarchitectures. What is inside of these new microarchitectures that make, the first of all, the CPU run quicker? Turbo boost changes and gets subtly better with each of these generations of tocks. The Turbo Boost 2, as it's called, on the Sandy Bridge microarchitecture, uh, apart from turboing up to much higher speeds when it's in this turbo mode, um, it also is smart and so it can see whether there are bottlenecks going on in the I.O. or the memory subsystems and it will turbo, providing the other parts of the system can keep up because there's no point in turboing your CPU up to however many gigahertz if it can't feed from the memory or the I.O. the data that it needs to do that turbo. As these systems move into Sandy Bridge and Haswell, Turbo Boost gets faster and smarter. Another aspect particularly of the core technologies is AVX, <coughs> which is particularly uh, relevant in the workstation space because AVX is about doing very high performance floating point arithmetic on large vectors uh, of, of numbers. From previous generation, we move into the Sandy Bridge architecture, which is inside 7610, 43% speed up on these tests. But if we switch on AVX on uh, software that is running those floating point calculations, then it wraps it up another about two and a half times. So in the workstation space, which is particularly where you tend to do this sort of thing, then these AVX capabilities, which came in first time in Sandy Bridge, make a big difference in overall performance. Those are what we call the Xeon Core technologies. The bits outside the core are called the Xeon Uncore technologies. And so let's take a look at the memory, what's going on in the memory subsystem, because that's key to the overall performance of the platform. And if I look inside what's in, in, in the 7610, the cache memory the, is, is much larger and the interconnects to let the cores actually get to those cache memories much, much faster, lower latency paths. Secondly, more memory, and as, as, as Don was saying, that uh, a lot of virtualization type applications, um, and you, or you want to keep complete models in memory, and so the size of memory is important. In an ideal world, the cores, the cores over here would talk to the memories over here, and the cores over here would talk to the memories over here. But, but of course, in a real life application, uh, you can't arrange it like that, and sometimes the cores over here want data out of the memory on the other side, and so these QPI links that join the two together, the speed of those links also much quicker. So all that was about saying the memory <coughs> subsystems inside these new platforms much faster than it has been previous. What about the I.O.? For the first time in the Sandy Bridge architecture, the PCI Express 3 controller is on die, and that means you get a lot lower latency as, as the I.O. data is 
transferring. And there's a technology called Data Direct I.O., which means the data coming off the I.O. device, be it the network or the disk or whatever, can go direct into the cache memory of the cores. And that can up the bandwidth of the I.O. device. So, so that was all about saying that there is faster cores, absolutely, but there's also a bunch of things above and beyond the core that in the memories and the IOs to make these overall systems much more performant than previous. And now just a couple words on the 1700, and here we're definitely in pre-launch territory. You know, although Haswell's well known out there as, as a name, it hasn't officially launched yet. It goes faster, and the CPUs run faster, the graphics run faster, but actually it's the graphics where the real sort of you know, boosts of performance generation on generation come nowadays. Although normally in workstation territory you tend to think discrete graphics when we're in workstation, in the entry level space where the 1700 fits, the integrated graphics has now got some really nice crunchy performance which fits very well for a lot of workstation applications too. Plus of course all of the certifications for the various workstation software applications. One slide on the as little disruption as possible. Part and parcel of the architectures that make up the workstation are various reliability, manageability, security capabilities. ECC memory is part and parcel of the memory architectures. So if you get a memory failure, it can at a hardware level be detected, be mapped out, be reported, and you can uh, take those uh, failing memory blocks out. Rapid storage te technology addresses disk reliability with various RAID configurations, so disk problems can be mapped out. I'm sure for most people here will know Vipro has grown up as a notebook desktop type technology, but now it's moving into the, into the workstation space, which lets you have a full remote hardware control of the system. Some IT person who has to keep these boxes running can sit one side of the world and remotely do everything as just as if they were physically sitting in front of that box. So any issues, they can quickly diagnose the fault and quickly fix it back going again. Security is a hot topic of the IT industry. It applies in workstations as it does everywhere else. So there's a bunch of buried in there hardware technologies to improve the security of the system. Things AS and I, secure key, identity protection technology, so it's a, a secure hardware level, and as we always say, hardware security is more robust than software only security. Inside 1700 and 7610, a bunch of things to make it run, both those systems run a lot faster than previous generations, and with as little disruption as possible. <laughs>